My name is David Bullock, I'm the market manager for Preston City Council. I look after the markets in Preston and I've uh, worked on the markets since uh, 2000. And prior to that I was the market manager at Accrington and also worked at Burnley Market. So quite a few years experience in markets. Preston Market is a, a, a great place, you've seen lots and lots of changes over the years and it's got a great history. Original uh, market site. Most people call it the flag market. In the background, we've got the Aris Museum. Um, this was a hive of activity at times. A lot of the markets in the past were centralised on this area, and also in the building in the background, the more modern building in the background, where the old town hall was at one stage. Um, just some of the examples. When the markets used to start in the morning, and the days and then days were Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. In order to give Preston folk the opportunity to get to the market first and get the best bargains, somebody would stand and ring a bell. So the, the more local you were to Preston, you could hear the bell and you get the bargains. The interesting fact also, in this area, in a, roughly where we're talking now, there were 28 pubs at one stage, 28 public houses. The building which was behind it, which is the Irish Museum, when that was demolished, it involved demolishing seven public houses. So it indicates there was a lot of beer and alcohol drunk in those days. Under the fish market canopy. Um, fish market, why? Because obviously fish were sold. But the history of this area, um, markets were, or well, certainly trading was going on back in the early 1900s with pictures showing people selling second hand clothing, people selling shoes. Well, the actual canopy was built uh, and opened in 1924. Predominantly people sold fish then. Um, refurbished in 1917. So this, uh, this area is the fish market. It was quite interesting in Preston. There was, I think, 128 fish and chip shops in the early 1900s. Um, so significant things what people seemed to do in that early um, stages of the century was eat fish and chips and drink beer and drink alcohol. So if you look at the background now, you'll see some containers. We now call this area the box market, so its name's changed again. Um, you can see these shipping containers which have been converted into retail units. We've potentially got eight retail units and at the back of these retail units we've also got uh, storage accommodation. Quite a unique idea. It's been well received. We're still working on uh, trying to develop the area. But this is, is part of the new Preston market to take us forward. of the um, outdoor market it changed slightly over the last few years. Uh, this building was erected in, well finished in 1875 but work actually started in 1870. Uh, you can see at the uh, side of this column, Jake Lynn, these were the original contractors who started building the site uh, in 1870 but unfortunately in August of 1870 it collapsed. Um, there were about 10 men, I believe, working on the site at the time. Luckily, nobody was uh, seriously hurt. I think one man was taken to hospital, but we're very, very lucky. Following on from that, the, council, the operators then decided to bring in another operator to finish off the scheme. And we just move up here. by the actual contractors who finished the job, William Olsa, and it was completed in 1875. The market used to operate on what is called boards and trestles. It was a very manual intensive operation. Each stall was made up of um, 12 stall boards and up to four trestle legs. 
A lot of the equipment was actually stored on site and was left there overnight. But also our backup equipment was stored in some prison cells, which we're going to take you across to have a look at. Trestles or trestle legs, as we used to call them. There's a big pile of them still in stock. We don't, no longer use them nowadays, but this is where we stored a lot of the surplus equipment, uh, equipment that was waiting for repair and new stock which uh, arrived from time to time. Again, the outdoor can canopy. Um, actually, originally an orchard, and at the bottom end of the market is what's called Orchard Street, and it's the name Orchard Street came from the original site being an orchard. If you look to the side, you'll also see Liverpool Street. Now, actually, it was a street. If you look on Google Maps now, you can't find it. But anybody ask any questions? Liverpool Street still exists. It will eventually reopen when the rest of the development falls into place. If we look towards the ceiling, when this building was originally opened, there was actually no lighting in. The lighting was natural daylight, and the natural daylight came from some glass panels which were in the ceiling. Uh, in the, I think, the late 50s, the glass panels were taken out, timber replaced the panels, and electric lighting was installed. To my side is the, the site of the old market, which opened in 1972, which was demolished last year in 2019. Now we're just at a, a derelict site waiting for refurbishment. When the work was carried out on the new market, we decided as a memento for future generations we would bury a time capsule. So under these flags is a time capsule containing images of the market, images of the traders who worked on the market, all those the plans and little bits and pieces of the history of the project, how it was all developed. So in future years, when this market's refurbished again, somebody will hopefully come across this time capsule and look back at what we've, we've done in 2017 and 2018. The, uh, the old outdoor market. When the work was going on to build this new structure, it involved putting significant foundations in. And they actually involved taking the old flooring up, which at that time was cobbled, covered with like a, an asphalt surface. And when they removed the cobbles and the asphalt surface and dug down to put the foundations in, they found what were called um, shell pits. And these shell pits contained hundreds of oyster and cockle shells. Um, so we, we, anti we, we believe they were probably buried for some reason by the Southport fish merchants who probably stood in this area and sold the wares, um, probably going back to um, mid-1850s, 1860s, we're not sure of the exact time. We don't know why they buried them, but they were buried in this area. Standing again, looking at the new indoor market under the 1875 canopy. The new indoor market actually opened on the 18th of Feb, which we were first invited members of the public into the building. The official opening was carried out by Councillor Peter Rankin, including also dignities like some of the traders, on the 10th of March 2018. One of the fascinating facts about this building is that um, the span is approximately 90 feet, so that 
90 feet from one side of the building to the far side which gave us a great opportunity to do all kind of events. So not only was it used as a market, but it was also used in the past for things like fairgrounds. We've had all kind of activities under there. And without any central support in the middle, you've got a fantastic opportunity to put all kind of events under that canopy. The other interesting fact is you'll notice in the distance is there's a slope on the building. And I'm told the dif distance is uh, roughly a 13 foot drop from the top of the market on uh, Lancaster Road and to the bottom of the market at Orchard Street. The 20 tour is a rather shorter version than normal, obviously that's due to the Covid crisis. You're welcome to uh, fire any questions to me. Um, we hope you come and visit the market, We're, we've maintained the market, we've stayed open, we want you to support the market, support our traders and hopefully in 2021 we'll be uh, back to normal or as near as back to normal as we can.